Hello everyone. Hope you have gone through the previous video on introduction to hypothesis testing. Today we will see how to select the right hypothesis test for analyzing our data. Before getting into the test selection decision tree, let's quickly look at a few more important concepts directly related to the tests. What exactly does a hypothesis test do for us? It validates the excess or the potential causes. It can detect the difference in average and the difference in variance for continuous data and difference in proportion defective for discrete data. It is very important to know about parametric and non-parametric tests. Parametric tests are used for normally distributed data, whereas non-parametric tests are distribution-free tests. Always remember y is a function of x. x are the causes and y is the effect. Reasons to use parametric tests. Though these tests assume that we are working on normal data, parametric tests are also good with skewed and non-normal distributions. Just that we have to take care of the sample size involved in the analysis. Here is a guideline to the sample size requirement for non-normal data. Secondly, parametric tests perform well with groups having different spread. And finally, these tests usually have more statistical power. These are good enough reasons for us to be using parametric tests. Let's also quickly look at the reasons for why or when should we use non-parametric tests. Number one, when we are dealing with medians or when the sample size is small or we have ordinal data, rank data or outliers non-parametric tests really helps us a lot. Let's look at the mantra for selecting the right hypothesis test. This is what we were waiting for. When we try to pick an appropriate statistical test, we should start with the basics. We must know the data type for both, a, both X and Y, that is the cause and the effect. We start by assuming that our X, that is the data for the potential cause, is discrete data. Y could be continuous or discrete. A continuous Y can be categorized into mean, median, and standard deviation. And a discrete Y could be proportions. Now, since hypothesis testing is a comparative method to validate the potential causes, it means that we are actually comparing. Comparing what and how? Well, we are comparing one mean to a standard value, one mean with another mean, or comparing multiple means, and so on for median, standard deviation, and proportions. So, the tests are one sample t-test, two sample t-test, and one way ANOVA when we are comparing means. For median, we have one sample Wilcoxon, Mann-Whitney test, and Kruskal-Wallis test. For standard deviation, it is one variance test, two variance test, and Bartlett or Levine's test. Using F-test for two variance test strictly requires both the distributions to be normal. Levine's is a more robust test which uses the absolute values of the deviations from the mean. There is another one and super robust brown Forsyth test which uses the absolute values of the deviations from the median. Between Bartlett and Levine's test for multiple standard deviations, Bartlett's test has a better performance if we have a strong evidence that our data comes from a normal or nearly normal distribution. Levine's test is less sensitive to departures from normality. Now for a discrete Y and comparing proportions, we have one proportion test, two proportion test, and chi-square test. So this is the primary mantra for you. Just look at this chart and you have mastered hypothesis testing, at least to some extent. 
At this point, you might be thinking that we have assumed x to be discrete right at the beginning. What if x was continuous? To answer your question, if x is continuous and y is also continuous, we use correlation and simple linear regression. If x is continuous and y is discrete, we use logistic regression. With this, I can assure you that now you are almost there towards mastering hypothesis tests. Need just a few more days so that we can together look at all these tests one by one. I am excited. Are you? Well, well then, thanks so much for watching this and please do wait for my next video on hypothesis tests, the tests that we have seen just now. There are 12 such tests that we have talked about and we will look at each of these tests in details. Till then, please do share your thoughts on this particular video and if there is anything else that you would like to know about hypothesis testing. And please do subscribe to stay updated on future videos. Cheers. Bye-bye.